Thank you, thank you. It's, it's so wonderful to be back um, after all the delays, and I'm really, I'm really delighted to be here. Um, over the pandemic, I bought a 3D printer and was making lots of tops and having lots of fun. And this is one of my favorites. Let's see if the... This is called a tippy top, and when you spin it, it flips over and uh, spins on its stem. And this is a very paradoxical thing. Uh, people have tried to explain it for many years, and it, 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 it's... When it, when it uh, flips over, its center of gravity actually moves upward, which seems like it would require energy. How can that, how can that possibly be? Um, and uh, over the years, many people have tried to explain this. I love this picture of two Nobel laureates pondering over the tiny tippy top. <laughs> and there's a famous quote by Einstein that says, physics should be as simple as possible, but not simpler. And yet, it didn't seem like the tippy top had a simple explanation. It, for many years, uh, nobody could really come up with a simple explanation. But you may not know that in the past 15 years, a, a, an explanation has emerged that is, uh, and, and it com comes from the dynamical systems community. This paper I mentioned on the bottom came out in 2012, and I, uh, I have, I, it's the main one that I have looked at, and the figure there is from that. And basically, they uh, had a huge simplification where they considered a sphere instead of the complicated shape of the tippy top. Um, and what they came up with in, is in this table on the right. Um, as you know, an object which is not moving uh, is a, has a stable equilibrium when its center of gravity is low and unstable when its center of gravity is high. But when an object, when a sphere is spinning, it can have these other two groups of behavior, and all types of behavior are actually possible. But I draw your attention in particular to group two, which is exactly the opposite of a stationary object. It's unstable when its center of gravity is low, and it's stable when its center of gravity is high. And this is the domain of the tippy top. So I thought about this paper and started printing some tops and I had this idea to create a top with a hollow cylinder inside where a, a metal ball can move up and down and it only has three free parameters as you can see there, the length of the cylinder and the radius of the two balls. But let's imagine that we can um, make this, it, let's imagine that it behaves like a tippy top that we can get it in this group two. And uh, that actually is not easy, but we'll figure out how to do that in a second. What's gonna happen when we spin this thing? Well, its center of gravity here is low, so it's gonna wanna flip over in this position, but we know that uh, things that are heavy tend to fall down, and the ball is unsupported, will presumably drop back down. And uh, you notice we're back in the exact same position we started with, except we're upside down. And so I call this a flippy top. Um, now, how are we going to make this behave like a tippy top? Uh, so I go to this graph here I created. Um, oh, uh, what, this is a phase diagram of this object, that you, that, this top. In the horizontal axis is the uh, length of the cylinder increasing, and the vertical axis is the radius of the ball bearing. And we notice that there's this... Uh, so we want to look for type 2 behavior from this paper. This, this is actually calculated using the formulas in the paper by calculating the, uh, the uh, moments of inertia of the top. And I, we, I claim we want to be in this green strip in the middle, which is very narrow. So uh, for your exchange gift, you are going to get a flippy top, which operates at the x position there. Um, and... So here's a demo of what it looks like when you spin it. I want you to notice a couple things. First of all, I'm spinning it on a plate. This just keeps it from flying off to infinity. And also, uh, notice the way I start it, because this is a way to get a really fast spin. And we're going to count the number of flips that this thing does. Um, and you can notice this by the color change of the top. And second, you can see the ball bearing sometimes. Um, and third, you can hear it, and that is the, the thing we're going to count. So let's see what happens. Oh, no sound. 
One, two, three, four. <laughs> oh, you can't hear the sound. Well, I mean, the sound is the main thing I listen for. Um, and it actually does five at the end here. Um, so, uh, everyone is going to get one of these. And I wanted to say that um, it doesn't come apart. <laughs> and the, world, the record for the number of flips is, strangely enough, seven, which is exactly half of 14. Um, <laughs> any, anyone who can beat the record should win a cruise or something. Because, and actually, <laughs> 30 seconds, thank you. Um, I have a. I, I also have a. I wrote a uh, description of how I designed this, which is the, which is, uh, which you can get to from a link on the packaging, and in it, it is proven that it can't flip more than ten times this top. So if you manage to break the record by eleven, uh, you must be cheating. Okay, and there's also up in the sales room. I have other tops. There's a flippy ball, which actually does come apart. It's a puzzle, and there's my Etsy shop. I have a lot of other things to play with that aren't tops that are just ordinary puzzles. Anyway, thank you. Thank you.